Hello, everybody. My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron podcast, and we're coming to you live from round three of the Nova Open. This is going to be a salvage mission scenario. This round, I have a co-commentator, at least for a little bit. His name is... Gregory Aram Cashmanian. Social security number. No, I'm not going to... And we have Andrew Lewinsky versus George Berrios. Um, this is, of course, Greg of Nickel City X-Wing. He, uh, he didn't shout doing? himself out, so I just got to do it. So uh, it's, got, it's hard. It's like it feels weird, you know? I mean, I get it. I get it. You're, like, much better at this than I am, so maybe it's not <laughs> as weird for you, but, like, it's weird for me. <laughs> Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, and break down these lists, Greg. Uh, I want you to break down Andrews. I'll take on George's and everybody at home. It's time to choose your champion. Woo. Andrew Lewinsky flying scum and villainy, leading us off with the I-5 fire spray Boba Fett. What a build with notorious proton bombs, contraband cybernetics, the Marauder title, Maul, and a veteran tail gunner. Kind of bringing back a little bit of the Boba of old with Maul there. And the ST-70 with the Mandalorian, a.k.a. the Razor Crest, with Juke, Gamut Key, the Child, Greedo, and the Razor Crest title, which means there probably is a surprise. Contra uh, well, it's, it's probably contraband cybernetics. Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> There's a surprise and listen under there. And last but not least, it's Kanan Jarrus. And Kanan has an unspecified loadout with something and something I cannot read. It is uh, Compassion and Ahsoka Tano. Interesting. So an extra force in Compassion for a failed action focus. I wonder what that Compassion does. That might just be a points filler, but like I have nothing else to put on here. I'm smiling through the mask. They can't see it, but I am. It, it, goes, it transfers to your eyes, Greg. Oh, is that, is that what it... Yeah. That what, that, yeah. It, okay. it, there, it just... It changed just a little bit. A little bit of extra joy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at George's list. Before we do that, this is Salvage Mission. Starting in the second round, uh, players can use the toe action to go ahead and scoop up one of those objective tokens. And if they hold that by the end of the end phase, starting in round two, you get a point each turn. Um, of course, if you suffer a critical damage at any point, you do have to drop that, and the enemy places it within range one of you. Um, looking just really quickly at Andrew's list, he does have one forced crit me mechanic, and that is the Proton Bomb. So watch out for that. And also have Greedo on the Mandalorian. Yep. Greedo's good at an I-5. It's not perfect because of Django on the other side, but mm -hmm. it's still pretty good. All right, now on the right side, we have George Berrios with General Grievous, Django Fett, couple of vultures here. We have Bombardment Drone, Separatist Drone, and DFS-81. Let's go ahead and break down some of these cards here. General Grievous has pretty much the classic loadout here, Outmaneuver, Impermium Plating, and Soulless One. If you're not familiar with that, Outmaneuver, reducing the agility when he has the flank of somebody. Impervium plating, potentially ditching those ship crit cards uh, twice during the game. You got two charges and soulless one, plus two hull, making yourself a little thicker and more defensive when, uh, when you are outside of that, when you do not have arc on the enemy who's shooting you. Words are hard, Greg. I understand. I've been there. <laughs> then we got Django Fett in the fire spray in that beautifully painted uh fire spray by the way it looks super neat good job george or whoever painted it for you can't we're not sure who it is but it doesn't matter i give credit to george until told otherwise there there we go so Django fett's got lone wolf he's going to be want to be alone or at least in opportunities where he is alone or has made it to the end game has one defensive or offensive reroll a turn savage old press for that force charge additionally you can actually use this ability once in a while after a friendly ship in your front arc at range one to two gains a stress or a strain token you may spend the force if you do that chain that ship gains a focus token so you have a little bit of token manipulation you might end up seeing that most of the time people are just using it for the force but that is actually a usable ability Thermal detonators for some explosiveness in the mid-game when you start dropping bombs. You can potentially do damage or 
deal strain tokens. False transponder codes, take a lock or locked, you get a jam. Delayed fuses, taking those thermal detonators and saying, you know what, we're gonna wait a turn before those go kaboom. We have the Slave 1 title, allowing you to change a hit to a crit when they, when, if you are in the defender's back arc, when you're flanking them, get a little extra critical damage. That might end up mattering in this matchup because we are playing Salvage Mission. And then Veteran Tail Gunner says, you know what's better than shooting once? Shooting twice! Once I, I, out the front and the back. I've seen a lot of Veteran Tail Gunners these days. I, people are starting to catch it on that. More red dice is better. <laughs> what? No. All right, Greg. So if you were at home playing Choose Your Champion, you're sitting at home in your super sweet computer rig. Yeah. Right? It and, really is. And it was your turn to be like, all right, time to vote. Where, where would your vote go? It's so hard to go against Boba Fett, especially with a Kanan out there being like, oh, you wanted to roll your full complement of dice? How about not? It's True. just, it's... For me, it's even harder to deny the benefit of having all these extra ships to actually collect the salvage. Mm -hmm. Like, taking away the boost action from the fire spray is bad. It is. Kanan can grab one pretty much no consequence. But even the Mandalorian uses a barrel roll effectively. Mm -hmm. And towing will take that away from you. Django obviously is not going to pick up one. But these vultures, these hyenas, even though they do have barrel roll, they might just want to sit on a rock collect a salvage, collect some points while Grievous is doing his thing. That's right, just just turn, turn, in, turn in the machine and <laughs> as yeah. the points come out. And since you can't barrel roll off the rock anymore, uh, that mechanic has been taken away from them on the struts. Mm -hmm. it, you just sit there and, and collect points until you get blown up while your, your ships do things. Here's my question to you, Dion. Now I know. You know. And, and of course you know. Of course. It's just for anyone out there who might not know. Uh -huh. If Grievous were to be carrying a salvage, yes. which I don't think is going to happen. Probably not. But if he were and yeah. then takes a crit but imperviums that crit away, what interaction happens first? Does he, does he drop the salvage or is it like it never even happened? So you have to have suffered a critical damage. So the, the salvage doesn't get popped off. Mm, okay. Yeah. And again, I I knew that. Yeah. And obviously you know that. Right. And and hundreds of people out there knew it. Yeah. But, you know, for the people who didn't. Right. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's always good to double check, right? Yeah. For the people. For the people. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta help out the people. All righty. Now looking at this interesting George choosing not to do the toe action. Yeah, I'm a little. I not perturbed, but confused. Why not pick up that extra point this turn? I mean, well, he's probably worried about Boba Fett. It's also not turn four. It's just turn two. I mean, I too am worried about Boba Fett, but it's a point, you know? Points yeah. are points. So we are going to go ahead and do a toe action there on Andrew Lewinsky's Hawk. The the Hawk does have a boost action, but uh, normally not really. Not you know, really it's, it's red. You don't use it all that often. Mm hmm but I think we're getting a little peek at the strategy here with uh, Ahsoka, because I believe that gave the Razor Crest a focus with the Force Friend from Ahsoka. Is that right? Oh, cheeky! Let's go ahead and, and pull up that uh, that card so we can double check. All right, so Ahsoka says, after you fully execute a maneuver, which it did, you may spend the Force to choose one friendly ship in your back arc. Uh, at range one to two, if you do, that ship gains a red focus uh, or performs a red focus action even while stressed. That's pretty baller. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Here's here's something I've thought about for a long time watching games. People start doing this on like turn one, turn two. I think wait, like if you're not engaging and you know you're probably not engaging, why not wait a turn? Why not spring that strategy and not clue your opponent in to what your your game plan is for these specific things? Well, I think in this situation, it's because you, he, yeah, chose, he, he chose to go fast. He yeah, chose he might, to go he might fast. be going, yeah. Now, this, the Ahsoka Tano does work really well with uh, the Razor Crest because it does have those all those straight maneuvers that are blue. Right. And uh, most likely, even if Boba Fett does a one straight, you're going to be in, in range for, uh, Boba? for shots. Boba picked up the salvage. What? 
that medium base boost on Boba, especially the fire sprays, is like one of the most classic. Like that's what you do, right? Yeah. You like boost out R, shoot you with the back. Like I mean, that's, that's solely why you take them off. <laughs> All right, and we are speaking of fire sprays boosting, so we are going to have some Mando versus Django action here. Yeah. Uh, almost, yeah. almost no choice but to do that. I think uh, George was not prepared for the fast aggression here from Andrew. Mm -hmm. Dialing in the bank was off center. Didn't want to take shots without getting some in return. Although shooting that Razor Crest seems pointless with the two evade tokens and a focus and a force. It does. Going to go at Kanan, spending the force. Let's go ahead and get ready here. So only a single crit coming into Kanan. Yeah. Again, only two dice. Oh, spends the force for two. Oh, that's going to be shields. Takes two. Ouchies. Being able to get that hawk off right away is is good. Getting those two shields is a yeah, big big absolutely. boon. Absolutely. And that's the uh, that's a little bit of downside of starving yourself. <gasps> oh, that crit too. That's mm -hmm. a dropped on the point. Yep. So he just suffered a critical damage. Gonna be forced to drop the crate. I think I put it behind Kanan right now. Yeah, yeah, just get it get it out of the way. Put it in a spot where if you want to pick it up with Django, you can. Again, uh, don't advise this with fire sprays. This is not typically how fire sprays are played. <laughs> Look at all that token stacking on the Mando. And here we go, range one, I think. Oh, I heard I heard a range two call. Yeah. Mando, three dice, has all the tokens. Spends a force. I'm surprised he doesn't Greedo here. Kind of get that engine going. Yeah, got to remember your triggers. Juke, Juke. down, that's going to be two. So decided to go ahead and use the Lone Wolf. Didn't get anything and does suffer two shields there on Django. This is kind of a big opening swing. Mm -hmm. A real quick answer to Imagineering Man asking, uh, does it need to be an arc for Kanan? The ability says a friendly ship in his arc or, or himself. himself. Yep. So that, that himself doesn't matter with arc because it's him. Oh, big swing here from Boba Fett. Hit the two dream. Crits. But that's the dream right back. <laughs> three for three. The dice giveth and taketh away. We they talked sure about this before. Grievous, I do think that's going to be a range three swing, right? All right, single crit, looking at Boa. If it gets through, you drop the crate. Has the force. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> Chaos. So there we go, a good first round. So dessert. Desert Iceman asking, shouldn't Kanan have three force because of the crew? I think you're right. The question is, maybe it's on the card. Kanan, Kanan's one force, and then the crew. Oh, he is, two he's force. naturally one. Yeah. Got it. This is this is Kanan in the lost years. Uh, little the little the boy years Kanan. before abandoned force, Kanan. You know. Yep. I do really like that about this game is they take into account like the different eras yes. of people during, you know, like Silence of Kylo gets three or uh, two, two, and then Wylo gets three. That's right. He goes from tormented apprentice <laughs> to supreme leader. Yeah. He did it. I'll be, I'll be honest. Uh, Kylo, Kylo killing, uh, killing supreme leader Snoke, like... <laughs> I thought that was that was probably I think the coolest scene. That throne fight was and, awesome. Yeah, that 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 was great. Like I, th that also like even though they like 
they kind of gave it away a little bit with the lightsaber turning. It still yeah. like took me a little like, bit well, by surprise. You're like, wait, what? Oh, are you really? Are you really? Because I think I think what he was going for was like, oh, Kyle is turning to the light, but he did not. Yeah. He's just like classic, classic dark side being like, and your position is mine now. People are people are just randomly yelling things. I'm sure we can get the X-Men community to to yell if we want if we really want oh, yeah. to. But we're gonna keep it civilized. I think so that, that table's so that's a Warhammer thing. Warhammer oh. people are yelling. Oh those 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 people. Uh, we don't talk about those people. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so looking at the positioning right now, you see that we still have what is that? Three Three of the salvage tokens still out on the board. And I, I, I still really, really feel like uh, George should have picked up another one there. So it's, it should be one to one, I think, correct? Yep. So we'll go ahead. We'll take a look at the players here. Come on, Andrew. Get in frame. There's the thumbnail. We got it. We did it. Much focus. One to one. Oh, I do. I do love the two hands on the table. Oh, like the the you gotta like boom. I like it. I like the lean. Like right now, the lean over. I'm getting the top down view. Like. <laughs> Telling you, tall tall people. You have an advantage in this game. You don't know it. They do. do. It's like left-handed people in bowling have an advantage because their side of the lane doesn't lose oil as fast enough because everyone's right-handed. So, like, lefties have natural advantage in bowling. It's a lie. Bowling is a lie. I, I will tell you, I, <laughs> I watched, like, a 25-minute bowling YouTube documentary on a random day, and that's the only reason why I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got to love it. Got to love it. All right, let's take a peek and see how the people voted here. Let's go ahead and open up that window. Wow. Wow, that is pretty close. 52% to 47% leaning towards Andrew. We'll see who ends up with the points. I'll tell you what, if George can knock out Kanan super early, that dramatically changes this game because Kanan's whole thing is keeping the keeping Razor the ship, Crest. Yeah, keeping them alive, alive, right? Yeah. <clears throat> And that is a that is an interesting conundrum for people who are looking at those two ships, right? Because Mando walks in with all these tokens, and then you have really only his uh, Kanan's ability and a, and a token after that. And I think what ended up hurting here is on that turn where Mando got all tokened up, he used one of the Force with Ahsoka. And then only had one available after that. Then nothing for modifications for defense. Yeah, he had right? no, he had no tokens because he picked up the crate. Yep. So whatever green dice are bad. Yep. So road roll. Looks like that's going to Andrew. Andrew. I know my left from right. You do. Oh, they forgot to move the player token. That's it. I've had enough of that. <laughs> Doesn't matter quite yet. Let's we'll see if they if they they figure it out as they're going. We're dropping thermal detonators. Are we getting fuses? Right? Fuses. Yeah. Honestly. Oh. It's, it, this is one of those moves that, like, my instinct is, like, too soon, but then it's going to work, and then I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm, I know this game. <laughs> and there's the fuse. He's going for it. Is he doing both or just one? Seems like one. Maybe he's using one for both. We'll find out. Yeah. As long as the players on the table know what's going on. Here's the one bank from Kanan. We'll have to rotate the arc if he wants an opportunity to shoot at Django. 
Now Hawks can target lock. Oh, a jam into Django. J -j -j jam, no tokens for you. That is stressful. So again, we'll see if that ends up mattering. Because he jams, he doesn't have any defensive tokens besides a single force. Yep. Now, I don't know. Against, I guess Django does, does he have any way to re-roll? Is he still? He has Lone Wolf, and he's got the Force. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's going to be very roll dependent whether or not that jam ends up mattering. Like if it ends up at like three focus, you know, you have the re-roll and the Force for maybe one or two, and you have a chance to natty out the barrel roll here. Again, declining to pick up. I'm, I'm still a little confused why the aversion to picking this extra point up. Because then I can't shimmy, Greg. I want to be able to shimmy. To Listen, left. no one loves shimmying more than Greg, but at some point... Did Mando spend a force last round? No, he spent the focus. Yeah. Good eye, though. He, 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 uh, I think he immediately spent the force and then thought about it a second. Yeah, was he, like, nah, this focus is the one. There was an oopsie doopsie. Yeah. As some would say. Shimmy Skywalker. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. What, what you didn't know is that Amperu loved the disco at Anchorhead. <laughs> I do wonder if we end up with the one hard right here from Boba Fett. That's such a good move because it probably activates your veteran tail gunner. Yep, you got you end up getting shots uh, possibly on that separatist drone and uh, the bomber. Yeah, I think if I'm Grievous, I'm I'm boost focusing here. Because I think, I think Boba Fett has to be your last priority. Because that's definitely the hardest one to kill. Mm-hmm. So we did, we did end up getting a pickup on the other side. I forgot to color code these ships. I put the colors on there. But I don't know which one is which. Let's see. I took a picture. That's not the right time. We're picking a raffle winner. Okay. I was so confused. Good the job, guy, Greg. You did the, good. This guy just approached me waving a cup. I was like, what do you want from me? <laughs> Taking it out of his hands. <laughs> Don't blame me. All right, comes up, Mando. This is interesting because I don't believe Kanan rotated. He did not. So that kind of loses the protection of the, the force spend. But I also think that the target is quite obviously Kanan. Right, yeah, I 100% it, it, agree. Shot's going to end up going into Kanan. Kanan needs that force for himself. Yeah. And there it is. Not a one hard, it's even better. Two hard gives you a little more distance. Yeah, and I can't tell specifically, but that looks like it might actually be out of Grievous's arc as well. Mmm, tasty. There's a, there's a chance. This. It's a non-zero chance. <laughs> Is he going to try to burn the... Some very loose arc checking with uh, the target lock. Yeah, I think he was going to try and burn the false transponder codes. But I don't know if it reached. I think I heard on Grievous, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. Yep. So yeah, there it is. 
like this move from Django. Okay, I didn't okay. know it was 4K. a turnaround. You don't really do that a lot with fire sprays, but you know what? Unconventional fire spraying is what we're here for. Takes a stress, still jammed. Still has Lone Wolf, still got Savage, he has mods. Yeah, there's nothing. Like it's fine, right? <laughs> And oh, first, is that in? Mando's going to suffer from the thermal detonator. Rolling one die. That's a That's strain. A strain. <laughs> yeah, because he put the, what you come and call it, the fuse on the other one. So we were asking, why just one? My question to you, Dion. Uh huh. This bombardment drone can throw proxies out the front. Oh, snap. Does it go? Uh, doing the classic hold it down. Let's see if it budges. Range two. Spends the, the force. Two dice only. Django does does have two mods. Ooh. This is a good start for Kanan. Oh, there it is. That's what you needed. The only thing that saved you there is bad dice. Yeah, Ooh. that's the only chance you had. That's a feels bad moment. I'm a little surprised if he doesn't go all in on this drone here. Because there's, a, again, a non-zero chance that you kill the drone and don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the pizzas. This is true. Of course, you roll like that. Nothing there. No, Nobody at range one to get some re-rolls for Boba. Veteran turret gunner. This does look like it's going to be obstructed. Marauder off the back. Mall for two. Now, Grievous really should check to see if in arc, depending on if you get a reroll or not. I guess if or you just, just roll fire, you don't need to, yeah. <laughs> Kids always ask me, how do I get better at X-Wing, Dion? And the answer is, roll better. Always. Just roll better. Every time. It's obstructed. Four on three. Crit focus on four dice, two blanks, target lock, able to get one. And then Mandalorian's ability allowing you to take a blank to a focus because he's in two enemy ship's arcs. Yeah. So that is one hit, three crits after the dust settles. Spends a calculate. Two crits going in, gonna save him a point here. Stun pilot. Fuel leak. Well, he... Bonus damage. Why the... That should just be two cards, yeah, right? two cards. Yeah, there we go. And Dion, he is never leaving that rock with a stun pilot now. Nope. <laughs> you just you just stay. This home is my home. Yeah. This land hey, is we're not my land. This land is your land. <laughs> so currently has that stun pilot. Currently has that fuel leak. And suffers a critical damage, so forced to drop the crate. Not a great day for crate holders. It seems like, I mean, compared to most of the games I see for salvage mission, uh, it's a very, like, how many are actually picked up right now? One? Uh, Two. Two out of the five. Yeah. Boba has one. 
And uh, that drone up the there. The red drone up there has one. Those drones in like no man's land right now. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go into, I think this is into Canaan from the bombardment drone. Yep, just keep, keep the pressure on. The force has been spent. No mods on either side. Not Terrible reds it. this round for George. They have betrayed him. That's what happens when you embrace the dark side, kids. <laughs> they might have cookies. They also have blank. Yeah. They're cookies, but they're not chocolate chip. They're just cookies. Nothing in them. Blank cookies. Blank, <laughs> blank cookies. I'm going to have to ask my wife to try that. Like, all right, find the, ch the chocolate chip recipe, but, like, but no just don't chocolate. put the chocolate chips. I'm curious. It's probably still good. It's a cookie. It, it, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Anybody in the chat ever make cookie cookies? Just cookies. <laughs> yeah. So flour and sugar, correct. Is that what's in cookies? And maybe a little bit of salt. I have no idea what's in cookies. I've never actually, like, made cookies. They're so easy to buy. I don't understand why people <laughs> make them. Uh, yes, Dion. It's still delicious. Uh, I have to confirm it because science. Yeah. Right? It wouldn't do to leave this unpeer reviewed. Mm hmm. It needs to be repeatable. Yeah, absolutely. Is there butter in cookies? And the good ones? <laughs> it can be. There's a whole brand called Butter Cookies. Yeah. You should have never told people you don't like pickles. I, mean, I like I like regret that decision for you. I mean, it's okay. It's I will carry that forever. Right, right. On my deathbed, I'm sure somebody whispered in my ear, pickles. Well, I was reading <laughs> chat yesterday and I, I couldn't hear anything because like on the floor, right? Right. But I'm pretty sure they were you were running through names for your daughter. Right. And someone was like pickles. <laughs> of course, yes. Isn't that just a sugar cookie? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We have any bakers out there? <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, so we are now in round three. We'll go ahead and just double check, uh, make sure that two we're- Two as well. Yep. They aren't keeping track around, so that's kind of on us. Yep. Although it does look like it's saying 20,002. That was 10 years ago. Oh, 20,000. No, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's in a also, long time. Also, 2002 is 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> a boom owl says Boba, Maul, Mando, Grogu, Kanan, Ahsoka, all in one list. It's kind of amazingly thematic. That is pretty cool. It is pretty neat. I think the only one that doesn't really fit is Kanan. Like, yeah. Well, Kanan hung out with Ahsoka. Ahsoka really is the glue here. She is. Ahsoka's like bringing right. everyone together. You're right. You're right. All right. Star, Star Wars content. Uh, question here. Yeah. So we know there's a Soka Tano um, a show coming. Sure. Super excited about it. Things going to be great. Rosario. That's right. We know we're going to get a uh, live action Sabine Wren. Oh. Right. I think live action Hera is going to be a thing too. I think Hera is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. If we're being she's, honest, she's she's amazing. But I wonder if Kanan will ever. I know, obviously. Spoilers for Rebels, by the way. Cover your ear for 30 seconds. The fact that he's he died, right? Right. Will we ever get a chance to see Kanan in live action in some type of past <sighs> before his timeline or in his timeline? I could see it being like a cameo. Yeah. I don't think we get like a full Kanan live action. Yep. Like thing but I could see like you look off in the distance and there's a jag you see like the lightsaber and you're like oh that's Kanan's lightsaber and the ponytail and stuff yep uh, 
it'd be cool. Do you think Freddie Prince Jr. could play Kanan? Has makeup evolved that far? Uh, he maybe could pull off the blind version of Kanan. That's a great point. You get a lot of leeway, right? Because you have that yeah, whole the, the whole set, the whole face covering. But without the mask, I don't think so. I think we get, don't we get Andor at the end of this month? Oh, yes. Let's go. Dear AMG hashtag, make Cassie and crew legal again. I want to guess. We'll get <laughs> we'll get a new. I'm sure we'll get some some new Cassie and stuff. I really love the mechanic of guessing, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is a pizza drop. Special delivery. Special delivery. Does it hit? Oh, it might not. Hold on, hold on. This is one of those moments where you gotta finagle. Hold, hold the model first. Hold the model. No! So it doesn't hit Mando, is what it looks like. If I'm Grievous, do I care about this bomb at all? Mm. I, I, I keep my two bank right. I, I gotta get in the attack. You gotta get into attack, but then you're you're, you're willingly taking two crits because well, you follow him again. Yeah. Those things have a one heart, don't they? Yeah. Does it fit? Yeah, probably. Yeah, one hard barrel roll out, and that at least gets you not bombed the next turn. All right, so we did end up getting that second crate picked up. Thank you, George. Hard one right here from... And there I shall stay <laughs> until the end of time. <laughs> Just going to grab a calculate. These have independent calculations, right? There's no... There's no real downside to not taking two, right? You just stay there. Uh, you take the stress, but... That doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't really matter, no. Oh, you know what? He's about to get bombed, though, right? Yes. I mean, that doesn't really... That still doesn't impact anything, no. but, you know, maybe that's what he's thinking. Like, ah. All right, so Kanan... Got away with uh, with getting shot by Django last turn. Hard turn away. Clearing the target lock was spent last turn. Kanan was stressed, and that too hard is still. I think he's trying to see if he can end up in the hourglass of Django. If Django goes like two straight, yeah. Kanan might be right in that perfect spot to not get shot. There's the one hard. And the roll. I assume this is going to be a roll into a red focus because the two banks are blue. And then the forwards are blue. 
But again, Bobo with this back arc makes it real hard to get your outmaneuver going with Grievous. Mm-hmm. Let's see if you can catch that corner. Grievous is one of my favorite ships in this game. I really, really enjoy it. All right, Mando with the 5K, flipping it around. Seeing if you can get shots on that bombardment drone, give a little bit of space from Django. And takes a stress. Currently strained. What was that strain for? Uh, the thermal detonator. Focus, so where did that focus? That must have been the surprise reveal contraband, right? Ah yes, contraband, contraband, contraband. More like contra fam. Woo woo! We all love contraband. And I think Django here calls it, does the one bank to continue the chase on Kanan. Great move. And you're finally in range one, so Kanan's going to bring you down to three dice instead of four, which is clutch time. And it looks like there is the claim. This is going to be a 3-1 turn for uh, I think it's going to end up George. being 2-1 unless because that bomb's going to make that uh, red drop, right? Right. It's quite Ooh, close. Question. Did I hear just out? Oh. Ooh. That is unfortunate. And as always, Dion was correct. I was wrong. It's going to be a 3 1 turn. <laughs> Does end up taking a shield on Grievous. Django time. So this is going to be your classic 3v2. Not four because of Kanan's ability. Woo, there it is. Read them and weep. Guaranteed one. Should be able to make this a crit too because you're uh, in the back arc. Isn't oh, that slave you're right. One title? Yes. Takes hit crit. Could it be? Hit. Is it a blinded pilot? Okay. Well, you know. Thematic. Ha! <laughs> Are you not wrong? It's true. And we'll keep going down those initiative. We're at initiative five now. Looks like Mando's gonna go first. Trying to get that drone off the table. Mando's I don't wondering think if he has two arcs. I don't know if he has one arc. Spending for three, so he could not use his ability. That's two on the bombardment drone. He's going to be alive by one right now. I feel, like, I feel like this room has gotten louder over the last... Like two minutes? Yeah. yeah 100% yes. it has. I thought my hearing suddenly got better, but no. <laughs> oh, he, he, he did miss the Greedo. That's again. That's the second time. You got to remember the greeds. Three Ooh, hits. Natty hits here. This is Boba on Jenko, I want to say. Mm. Lone Wolf reroll. The Lone Wolf has not gone well for Jenko. It's going to end up taking three there. Those are two shields and a card, I believe.
And he does have Arc on Grievous. So no re-rolls, no shenanigans outside of a focus for Grievous. Two natural. Spend the force for three. And gonna choose to be defensive and take a single shield on General Grievous. So Grievous spent their focus. If Grievous has range to Kanan, you have to take that. Yep. That's what he's checking Reach. right now. Reach. I think he's so. got it. That's outmaneuver. You get the Grievous rerolls. No, he's going into Boba. Looks like he probably didn't quite have Kanan. One hit. That focus had been spent already. Indeed. Two hits. That's a pretty good roll. It's above average. And that's a... Uh, two focuses. Two more hits, right? And who was that on? That was on... That was on Django. That was Kanan into Django. Oh, he did rotate. Yeah, we're, we're starting to feel the impacts of taking uh, objectives, but not uh, not tokening up here. Mm-hmm. Boba safe on that one. <laughs> Andrew asking, he's got another bomb, right? He's like, oh yeah. So at the end of that turn, oh, let's go ahead, let's finish up. We have end of round there. So that's gonna be one point for the scum. And three for the separatists. Django and two of the drones. So that I, feels like a big swing, but also when you think about how damaged Django is now, and you still haven't got Kanan off the board, that's the uh, that's the interesting part about this. You kind of you're trading Django for maybe two rounds of like good point differential. Yep. You got to keep him alive. You don't want to lose that uh, those eight points, and that's like. Obviously, chance engagement, we have half points, but in all of these other um, these other scenarios, like losing a ship is devastating, right? Because of yeah. how big those point swings can end up happening. And the thing is, they usually happen all around the same time, too. It's like a it's like a back and forth game, and then some a uh, ship goes, another ship goes, yep. and it's like all of a sudden. The game's out of hand. You're like, right. where did, what happened? What did I do? <laughs> All right, good game. 20 to 17. Yeah. <laughs> what? Please, no, sir. <laughs> where does Mando go next round? The blues, if I recall, in the ST-70 are not great. They are not. Let's take a peek. Yeah. Did we get another pizza delivery? I mean, yeah. I think I think you drop it no matter what if you're the bomber. And you let, you let Andrew and Mando choose if they're going to be stressed or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they would have to hard turn away. Hard turn two towards the top of the board. I'm not even sure Hard 2 will escape the pizza. It's a pizza of destiny! But I think, all right, this is controversial. Controversial, uh-oh, uh-oh. You just eat the pizza if you're Mando to be like, get Django out of here, that's eight points. So I'll, take, I'll take maximum three, three damage on the Mando. To, to just be hyper-aggressive? Yeah. When you have three ships, that 
That is scary. You're about to lose Kanan. I think I'd do it. I've, I've decided. I'm okay. going through it. I was like, you know what? I think I'd do it. I thought you had moved on. I was like, oh, oh, no, no, no. It's like, it's scary. All right. Well, I, I guess it is scary. It's not it's not, not scary. No. <laughs> I was just going through going through that, my options. I was like, you know what? If I was playing, I'd probably go for it. Ding dong. Special delivery. That's right. Little Caesar's hot and ready for you. Oof. <laughs> I got two hard clears. You can get it. You can do it too hard. All day. So Andrew dropping the proton bomb. Saying don't do not follow. You think, shall not pass. I think you can still two bank barrel roll again, focus, and be alright. The way is shut. <laughs> We do not suffer the living to pass. <laughs> there you, there you go. You there watch you the new go. show? Huh? Did you watch the new show? Came out, Amazon? It came out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two episodes. Two episodes? Dropped, dropped uh, Thursday. No. I was on. I was teaching and then on an airplane. I don't want excuses. I want to see some Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you not appreciate Galadriel? No, no, no. Is that a thing? Listen, listen. Are you listen, disrespecting listen. Elrond? No, 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 no. I have a daughter named Arwen. But that's what I'm asking you. Okay, I'm saying that if I were to watch that without my wife... Yeah, that'd be that'd be hell to pay. As a as a single man, <laughs> no one tells me when I watch my things. <laughs> I will be uh, I, I, we will be partaking when I arrive back home on Monday. Has your has your daughter seen Lord of the Rings? She's not. She's only six. Like right. not, not I don't quite. Know, I don't know anything about what's age appropriate for children. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> the six. Not. Not. We could probably read The Hobbit soon. Okay. All right. But not the movie. Like just reading it. Has she? Has she asked where her name has come from? Oh, she actually just did a name project. Oh. And uh, she was asking, "What does my my, my name mean? Your name is uh, Elf Princess." She's like, oh, that's so cool. Yes. And she knows where the, where our Lord of the Rings books are. Like, we have them up on a shelf. Can 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 six-year-olds read? They can. Okay. Yeah, mine can. She does, she does really well. That droid can't barrel roll. That droid doesn't, is never going to leave that rock with a stun pilot in one health. Oh man, that Greedo would have killed it which, too. Which now one, bar which one <laughs> barrel rolled? Hold on, hold on. Red barrel rolled with the crate. Ah, got it. Do you want? Do you want me? To I got do it. it. No. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome to GSP, sponsored by. Nah. Dion's gonna go ahead and tell him the news. I'm really surprised that droid left the uh, thing. Epi, what's going on? And anyway, well, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And that's my theory on black holes. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. You're welcome. I'm glad we could give you a platform. <laughs> Greg, did you get 0.5 hours of sleep last night? Uh, a little more than that. But I did wake up early to watch the F1 qualifying and then a soccer match. Sometimes I just like hanging out in my hotel room. Like it's not my room, you know, so it's like new and fun. Right. Like, oh, hey, cool. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Does it too hard fit? Yeah, do it out the front. It doesn't work with medium bases. No, you can't do that. Oh, is there another template there? I don't... All right.
right, so Mando does end up overlapping, avoids the bomb. Hey, that's, that's good. We'll get a range zero attack at least. I mean, honestly, that's not so bad. Boba Fett heading towards the bottom of the board. Now, here's what you got to be a little concerned with. Hit me. Did Django move fast thinking that there was no way Mando wouldn't eat a pizza? No. That's Django gonna... very much. He's getting hit. Overlapping in Boba. And not going to fit. We're going to go ahead and do the train tracks. And those train tracks are brought to you by Curled Paul Creatives. No coupon code required right now. Curled Paul Creatives, 15% off. Also, have you played in a Galactic Championship qualifier yet? It's time. Our next qualifier is happening in two weeks, September, the weekend of September 17th. Not next weekend. Next week is my birthday weekend. So I got family stuff to do. Turning 21. <laughs> no, no, not 21. Not 21. Can finally buy whipped cream in New York. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't buy whipped cream in New York unless you're 21. Are you is it, like in the cans? Really? The, the spray. The I, I, uh, people like huffing? Yeah, like whippets. <laughs> I didn't. That's been a running joke in, in Discord is Crispy can't buy whipped cream. <laughs> He's beating all of us all the time, and he can't yeah. buy whipped cream. <laughs> That's great. All right. So we did just suffer a critical damage there. That means that droid is forced to drop the crate. Yeah, I'm a little surprised it didn't just stay on the... I'm a little surprised. Not, not like way surprised. A little surprised. So overall, kind of a low-scoring game so far, but yeah. there's a bunch of things about to explode. Yeah, that's it's it's, it's going to be one of those like all at once type games. All right, so this is going to be two dice into two dice for a, a kill on Kanan. Desperately need this kill. Here we go. Oh, he wait, he's he's thinking about something else for a second. And safe. So had to spend it to stay alive. Oh. Range zero at Django. Two crits. Does he have anything? He's got focus. Spends the force he's got on board. Range two on Boba. Murata reroll, Boba Fett onto the bombardment drone. Three hits with the force. We need to see some natural pastas. Not, no pasta. That is negative pastas. Nope. You scheduled a inspection of the spaghetti factory and you did not show up. No. Gone. Three points added to the board there for Andrew. I will remember you. Mando going to go ahead and fire at General Grievous since the bombardment drone is down already. Crit focus. Crit. Wow. No modifiers available. Grievous, does he have any defensive mods? He's got the focus. Can take one crit. Did we get our first impervium? Yes. This, there it is. Impervium plating. No, sir. Denied. As good as an evade there. On day one, there was this kid named Matt. Okay. Actually, you can see right here, I had Matt Fact. It was his 12th birthday. All right. Okay, it was his 12th birthday, and his dad asked if he could play on stream. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Like that, That's a great, great idea. And his Grievous took... Two hits, two crits, rolled two evades, Impervium then two crits, two. and Impervium the other two. <laughs> it was ridiculous. No damage there. Oh, oh rolled too many. Mando. Cheater. 
Takes one. Takes on one. Mando. We'll finally get a child force back. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry, I tried to save the microphone. I was like, ah, what do I do? Hopefully I didn't explode your guys' ears too bad. Sorry about that. No, they liked it. <laughs> I'm sure. No, I'm very positive. Do you prefer to look at it here or here? Where's you know there? what? I'm going back and forth like a maniac. Okay, I mean, that's fine. It's like as you, uh, you know, you have different options as you go. Yeah. Blinded pilot, blinded pilot just one safe. That little drone trying to do some work, not having it. And Kane into Django. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is blank. All right, crates at the end here. So two to one, right? No, three zero. Oh. So Django has one, and one drone has one, and then. So I think Boba? it might just be one one. George has got two for sure. That top guy all the way at the top, and then Django. And then Boba, so two to one. Two on the separatist side, right? Yeah. So seven to seven. That's the score we have. Is that what the players got? Let's find out. Yep, tie game. Seven up. You remember that game, Heads Up, Seven Up? Do you ever oh, play that yeah. in school? Oh yeah. Do you ever do you ever play that in your 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 music teacher, right? I'm music teacher. We, we don't have a desk, so we can't really is it, play. Is it? Are you like conducting like a band? Is it like the whole like semicircle thing? For the purposes of this question, I'm gonna say yes. All right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So I was I was low brass, right? Uh huh. Euphonium, baritone, as one might say. <laughs> right. I mean, you get to choose which. But, but continue. Sure. Uh, so we were all the way like, all the way top. Like, if you're the conductor, yeah. To your right, like four rows back. Yeah. Is where they stash us. I mean, yeah, that's where where the the low sounds go generally. Yeah. Is that? Is it strategic? That, it is strategic. It is strategic. So they're like, they're like all the low bass to so the right. The, the reason you do that, one is for the physical instruments, right? So like tubas, the tone of like tubas and baritones, you want to keep them together. But if you bring those big instruments to the front, they're blocking the view for other people. Sure. And the second thing is generally you're supposed to tune from the bottom. You tune like as you adjust pitch to try to stack up chords, you want to be able to hear that those bottom notes. You want everybody in front to be able to hear that. Uh huh. But continue. Sorry. Oh, I didn't have anything other than that. I was just wondering if they were trying to get rid of us or like there was a purpose behind no, it. No, there's a purpose behind it. Okay. Yeah. It's because you were the most important. Yeah. Really. I really. Honestly, what would this band have done if I wasn't going boom? It, everything wouldn't have sounded as good. They don't let us do anything. Justice for the low brass. Trumpets get everything. We got nothing. <laughs> Their trumpety trumping would not be as good. The trumpety trumpeting, not not as good without without that low sound. Though I will say, as a composer of educational music, I do make sure that everybody gets something always. Even the saxophones, haven't they had enough? <laughs> Everybody gets something, Greg. Everybody gets something. Sick of the saxophones walking around like they own the school just because their instrument's the epitome of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started on trumpet, and then they were like, can you switch to French horn? And then they were like, your lips are way too big. We're putting you on baritone. <laughs> they just moved you over? Yeah. Like, you're I, not good at this. I will say now it is it is kind of it is now out, I'm going to use the word out of fashion to like physically stereotype kids be like you look like your facial structure equals this instrument. Sure, it was a different time when I was in school. Most of you weren't alive. <laughs> Does it make it easier or harder sometimes? Things like yeah, of course. Do you know what a tubercle is? A tubercle? Mm -hmm. No. So, do you ever, 
I'm not sure how much time you've spent at staring at people's lips. I have as a music teacher. Sure. Um, but some people, they have like a piece of skin that's uh-huh. like a bump either inside or sometimes outside of their lip where their lip kind of does. There's like a little, little dip down. Okay. So generally they say like, oh, if you have a tubercle, you can never play the flute. But it's not true. You just offset the aperture. Sure. Like that, that was like a big thing for a long time. People were like, oh, tubercle, nope, you're not allowed. No flute for you. I will say one of the funniest moments of my life is when we were rehearsing and one of the flute players literally dropped off the stage. <laughs> like just like, I don't know if they were too into it or what, but literally, and they were so like, they had their own flute, right? It wasn't like a rental. All right. And so like all you saw was them like trying to protect the flute and <laughs> like flow off the stage. <laughs> I don't have insurance on this. <laughs> no, these are stupid expensive. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, what do you want me to say, Dread Chef? And be like, oh, yeah, I stare at lips all the time. I mean, whatever. He has a reason to. I do. I do. Actually, this week we did uh, instrument demos with kids. Like them, the, the beginners, like picking their instrument for the first time. Yeah. They used to be called instrument tryouts. But that uh, kids got confused thinking they're like if I was bad at it does that mean I don't get to do it right like no you're just trying it so we changed the name instrument demos kids are soft these days everyone wants a trophy <laughs> that's where this is going right uh, right now no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah so I, I did run into a good problem and a, a good problem and I'll, I'll share it now so generally it's always hardest to to I'm gonna use the word staff but to get kids to play the bigger instruments right sure um but i had 12 kids interested in playing in the double bass i only have two basses i have physically have two this is a problem that i'm working on solving and i don't know if it's solvable but i'm gonna go ahead and say 12 double basses is an unreasonable amount of double basses for a band i want it all i want them all i want them all I'll t- I, there's 12 kids excited about double bass. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I just got to find the money, people, borrow some, steal some. I just got to get 12 bases. We're, uh, we're only going to play the Mission Impossible theme. <laughs> <laughs> and Jaws. That's right. Now, is your school, does your school split orchestra and band? Yeah, they're, they're separated. Yeah. I always kind of felt cheated by that because I wanted to see the violins. No, well, they can play together later. It doesn't really work, unfortunately. Because of key signatures and all, all the... Don't even get me started when they made me switch to treble the bass clef. That took me a good two months. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Here we go. Vulture Droid's on the move. So 24 single bass. <laughs> <laughs> so, mods, can we can we ban Tequila Source Rex? <laughs> oh. Epionic, are you saying that this planning phase is a syndicate? Wow. You're terrible. You're supposed to be the funny guy. I, I, I thought I was bringing in the funny ring. I think I'm being hilarious. I've had to tell several people this weekend that I'm funny. <laughs> All right. Canon takes a focus. I'm so surprised Kanan has lived this long. He's been just hanging on with one hole. Yeah. Just one hole, one force in a dream. Mm-hmm. It's a turn from... Gosh. I guess I get it from Grievous. I just... I don't know. All right. Going to get Boba... Uh, sorry, Django fed out of the way. So Boba can go ahead and perform... His talent roll. roll. I'm not surprised there. Get it turned around. Do these droids have 
Discords? Oh, they do. Oh, Kanan's wrecked. He's dead. He's just going to get Discorded to death. <laughs> Wait. You can't, you can't boost, right? Did he just boost? Yeah, I think All he right. just boosted. All right. Cause with contraband? Yeah. Uh, Paul? Paul? Judge? Uh, Boba cannot boost because he has a crate. I'm just messing with you, Tequilasaurus Rex. Also, I don't always connect Twitch names to real names because they're fake oh, names. I think everyone here should have to put their Twitch names on their thing instead of their real names. No, that would be I, I way get, easier for me. I get I get annoyed. How about both? Can I meet you in the middle with both? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I signed an NDA. Boba has moved back. I got a thumbs up from the judge. Great judging here this weekend. Mm. A lot of judges available. They're very active. We need IRL. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. All right, looks like Andrew's debating. He's doing it. This crate is my crate. So that puts us at 2-2. Two, two. With those objective markers, here comes Django. At this point, the players don't know how long they have left, but at this point, just keeping Django alive is a, a pretty big priority. Yep. And a reminder, the timer up at the top of our, our, uh, our board is not the actual timer. It is... 72 minutes, which is the minimum time. So the timer could go off at 72, and the judges say time in the round. Mm. But it could be up to 77. Now, do I actually know all the times? I do, but I can't tell you that. Were they were they preordained the times? They like were they, pre, they the were randomized, already? preordained. Correct. And there's the Discord. Attached. So that's a guaranteed. Actually, you know what? It's not guaranteed. If where's Kanan's arc? Do you see where his arc is pointing? It's in the back. Okay, guaranteed. Yeah, unless Man Mando can shoot it off. Uh, yeah. Range, range three. Oh no, there's two of them there now. Boba, save me. <laughs> Boba and Mando. <laughs> <laughs> but then it'd be tied. It'd be a tie game. You gotta focus on Django. All right, well, here we go. Django's up first, range one into the Mandalorian. That is. Ooh, even. Oh. You should get another crit for Greedo. So just no one's going to use Greedo this game. Greedo is, is pretend. There it is. Finally remembered. Oh, that's going to be a drop crate. That crate picked up, he's just gonna drop right now. Yep. And that is gonna be a tiebreaker point if Django doesn't go down. Ooh, a direct. And it's a direct hit. Extra damage. Down to five hole. And at this point, boys, it doesn't matter where it goes. Because your game is over. Did they call time? They should have called time. Official time call. Time called. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, they were ready, so I had them go. 
Two hits. Two evades. Not sure who was shooting who there. I think that was Django into one of the droids. That, that you're not allowed to buy whipped cream in New York. <laughs> huh? Not yet. November, baby. All right, here we go. Two hits coming in from Boba Fett. It's not going to be enough to take Django out. Just one hit. Mando needs to one-shot this. Rita to a crit. And the child. Yeah, that makes more sense. He went from blank to crit. Yeah. To crit. I'm like, no, that's not how that works. Hit crit. Hit crit. There's a, a chance. Kill. That could be a kill. Oh, it's red. Wait, what? I think Red's dead because Red took the bomb earlier, right? Ooh, baby! What? All right, Grievous range one, gets the rerolls, gets the outmaneuver, so it's gonna be 4v1. Try oh, yeah. if you can take out the Mando. Mm, uh, Greedo's been spent, so you can't make that a crit, so there's no chance at double damage. It's too many dice, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so Mando lives. Kanan dies. Kanan goes down. Plus oh, two. Yeah. Two to one for... Uh, Separatists. Yeah. I think it's 13 to 10. Let's double check here. They're, they're discussing it. Yeah, I think they just settled 13 to 10. Yep, they just settled it. So that means George Barrios wins 13 to 10 and is our victor in the third round. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J List, our Grand Admiral patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron out.